This is a recording of Boomer Tech Adventures Zoom broadcast for Maine Senior Guides Cabin Fever Reliever. Our topic is taking fabulous pictures of the flora and fauna around us. The main presenter is Chris Toy, and after a few introductory slides, we will join him. The first thing Chris would emphasize is that we need to know our equipment. Smartphones these days all come equipped with camera apps, which are really pretty good. However, some of the apps have a single lens and some have multiple. They may have a telephoto and a wide angle. So what is important is that we play with our camera app and learn its capabilities, even if it's just out in our backyard. However, when we get into the great outdoors, we need to be aware of our surroundings. We need to slow down and take everything in. For example, if you look at the picture at the top of this slide, you'll see a lovely mountain. And it's a great example of how paying attention to colors and textures really add to the viewing pleasure of the people you are sharing your pictures with. So if you look at this picture, you notice at the bottom there is a very smooth reflective lake. And then right above that, there are pine trees or fir trees, and most of them are green, but they add a little different texture than the green right above them. And once you go above the green, you notice the gray granite of the mountain, and at the very top of the mountain, you see where the sun is hitting it, and it's changing that gray to a, a rusty, a beautiful rusty golden color. And so those, those different colors and those different textures really make this a very interesting picture. Now, as we walk through the great outdoors, we need to look down once in a while because there are gems lurking under our feet. Now in the lower left-hand corner, you see this lovely little toadstool or mushroom all by itself but look at that orange and how it contrasts with the emerald green behind it. What a gorgeous image. The third thing we need to think about when we're out in the great beyond or just out in the local woods is that if we slow down and look carefully and slowly, we're much more apt to see the local wildlife. So if you look at the picture on the right, think about how easy it would be to walk right past that tree and not notice that wonderful white head of a bald eagle. But by taking time and looking around, more likely to see what's watching us. Now, one more thing to think about before we go to Chris, transition to Chris. When are the really spectacular times to take pictures? Photographers call the hour right after sunset. I'm sorry, let me restate that. The hour right after sunrise and the hour before sunset as the golden hours. That's because such gorgeous colors appear. Look at the picture in the right. That's sunrise over Cadillac Mountain. Look at the purples and the deep reds and the oranges and the yellows. What a contrast of colors. It really is a spectacular image and would bring back immediately the glory of a sunrise in Acadia National Park. The other pictures capture sunset and sunrise coming up through the trees. So it's worth our while to get up a little early, right after sunrise, and see what the day brings. And also, before we settle in for the evening, to go out 
and look at the way the light is capturing our surroundings. And with this, we're going to transfer to Chris and the rest of the presentation. Um, speaking of light, um, and if you don't want to wait until sunrise or sunset, you can take advantage of, um, of light. Um, one is to shoot in shade. So bright sunlight. Uh, someone had mentioned that you know when they took some pictures of flowers and things like that, or or the landscapes, it it was washed out. You know, it was too bright. And so, especially with flowers, if you can um, take them in the shade, you know, if you can't, you know, if if, if you're not doing the uh, golden hours, but if you can get in, get them into the shade, and some people actually will will bring a parasol, you know, a, a way to make shade if they're really, you know, on a schedule and they're trying to, to accomplish specific purposes. Um, if the shade is too deep, some people will actually bring reflectors and they'll actually reflect indirect light into the shadows so that they can actually improve the light the other thing you can do, and uh, this is, you know, there's what the that there's a silver lining in every cloud. Cloudy days are perfect for taking pictures of flowers because there are no shadows and things don't get washed out. So, um, so you can see, you know, obviously, well, not obviously, but lady slippers you can take great pictures of lady slippers. Why? Because lady slippers grow in the shade. So if you find a lady slipper, it's going to be in the shade. And you know, other things like hostas or whatever, or, or what have you. Um, and in fact, the shade, you know, the shade of hostas um, is actually really good because it's lightly filtered. The sunlight will actually go through the leaves and that center picture as you can see, there's hostas in the background, and then there's this little plant right here. And it's a very delicate plant. If it were in the sun, you wouldn't even be able to see it in the picture, but here um, under the hosta in the shade, um, it, it, it really kind of pops. And of course, here's our, um, here's our, our lilies here. Um, in our in our shade garden, but dappled sunlight. So cloudy days and look for shade. So you've got the golden hours, you've got cloudy days, and you've got shade. And it doesn't have to be heavy clouds, like hazy clouds are, are fine as well. So think about those things. And then <laughs> there's this kind of fun thing here. So um, especially in the morning golden hours, you're going to end up, you know, with, with dew. And, uh, so especially in the summer, if you're, if you're going to go out early, you can uh, find, find, um, you know, these little drops of crystals of water are always kind of fun. Or this is Jill's synthetic dew. And uh, I think I, she, she might sell that to you. No, actually just. Just get a just get water and a spray and um this was a um you can actually see the uh see the wings forming inside this chrysalis it's kind of cool um and here's you know just some morning flowers with some dew all right so another thing to think about um, is to visit your favorite places at different times of the year, looking for opportunities for photography. So this is an armillary, which is just, it's just outside our front door. And here it is here in the spring. And we've got this little feathered friend. And here's the summer, 
And we have the monarch butterflies. And this is the other end of it. That's the uh, feathered end of, of this pointy guy. Uh, here in the autumn, our uh, maple leaf just kind of fell right on top of that. And I happen to see that. Um, or maybe I just placed it there. No, I don't know. It was, it was there. But there's, you know, an opportunity there to kind of take the picture of the of the armillary. And in the winter, that snow is just a really nice backdrop to that black, um, to that black arrow. Um, um, I didn't catch it, but when there's um, ice, it's kind of neat because this, uh, this becomes caked with ice and it looks like it's encased in crystal. So pay attention to, to the seasons and the light in each of these seasons is, is very different as well. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that summer, that summer light versus here's the autumn light, which is, is, is very different. And here's the winter light, makes things much darker. Lots of green here. All right. So this, you know, we started out with being aware of your surroundings. And part of that is moving into those surroundings. So, you know, when you're looking far, you know, you're looking in the distance, you're kind of looking at something. When you look close, you use the word moving in, and you're actually trying to move into the, uh, the picture. And so, I can't remember who took this picture. Maybe Joan, maybe Jill. But um, here I am, I am, you know, trying to get another perspective on the Solomon seal. And um, moving in close, you get this close up. And in the, um, you know, in the courses, we do talk about, so how do you make sure that what you want to be in focus gets in focus? And uh, without going too much into depth at this point, um, you know, on your phone or your iPad, it, you know, you would tap lightly, right? This is what I wanted to be in focus. This is not in focus. The back's not in focus. But you tap on that and you'll get the little focus box and then um, if you tap and hold it, it actually freezes that focus because it's an auto focus. And then there's a sun um, on the side. I think in an Android, it's on the bottom, the slider for the exposure. So you can do focus and exposure, and then you can take that picture. All right. Um, you know, over here, um, a similar thing, this is a little bit trickier because butterflies don't, they, they don't stay still as easily. And it's, it's, they must have really good eyes because it's really hard to get close to them. Uh, but in this case, um, I use the zoom so that I can kind of stay a little further away so I don't disturb them. Uh, but then I use the zoom to kind of move in. So I'm moving in, you know, optically or digitally rather than moving in, um, you know, within inches. There's no way I'd get that close. This little guy here um, is a little tree frog, which, you know, it just, just came onto the deck. Um, apparently they can jump from our trees <laughs> onto our deck and, um, I used um, my, um, my flash, actually. This was in the evening. These guys usually come out at night. And I used my flash to get a picture of this little frog. Um, and the, all this yellow stuff is pollen. And I've cropped it out. But right over here, there's a little um, leaf hopper. And, um, I'm wondering whether or not this uh, this frog got that leaf hopper later in the evening. And here's another example of moving in close. Um, 
dragonflies are amazing, you know, kind of nature's helicopters. And, um, and again, these guys like butterflies, they, they can see really well. So I use my zoom lens to optically move in here. And all of these, all of these, um, I did, um, you know, post-production work on them. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute or so. But moving in close, so really just kind of moving your body in there. Or, as I mentioned, if you can't move in close, in some, in some cases, it's dangerous to move in too close, as you can see from at least one of these pictures. Um, so if you have you know, a camera with a zoom lens, um, you can definitely use that. What I would recommend is if you're going to use a zoom lens and you're going to do wildlife, um, it's a good idea to have a tripod or a monopod. And because what happens is when you zoom, any motion will make things blurry. And when you're, when you're magnifying, motion is magnified as well. Um, this lens on this camera, in case you're interested, this is a Nikon P1000. And um, it's fully extended there. Um, so it's not like a gigantic, um, it's not super heavy. But because of the optics, this is an equivalent of a 10 foot long telescope. So it's, you know, it's under eight inches, I think, in, in fully extended, but it's optical, op, optical capability is, is 10 feet, which is, I'm not even sure they make lenses that you can buy um, for, for, for any price. So this is this is a pretty cool camera, and it's intense. It's called a long lens uh, camera. So, other than this picture, which um, Jill, did you take this, or did Chris LeBay take the um, take That's the line? That's fine. That's fine. Um, there you go. I was uh, I was using a. Um, a camera, not my iPhone there, I believe. Not not as big as yours, but a little um, uh, Sony or anyway. Yeah. But it had it had uh, it has a um, zoom lens on it. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and I just point out um, that remember the rule of thirds. So if you kind of take a look at, see the eye there? And if I drew lines here, that eye and the head would be kind of in that third. Here's the eye of the butterfly, this deer, all right? This deer could see me, this is right across the street from the house. Um, this deer could see me, but we were far enough away that the deer didn't think I was a threat and was just wanted to keep an eye on me and those ears are right up listening. Um, so, and then I didn't focus on the eye here. What I did is I focused on the beak. And so that beak is in that third. So when you shoot, if you can, you know, if you have, if you have the time and, and you know, you thought about light and time of day and all that good stuff, if when you look in your viewfinder, if you can then kind of imagine that you've got, you know, this rule of thirds and you actually try to line up your subject whether you're zooming in or you're moving in close, but if you can kind of do that in advance, you'll end up, you'll start off with a better picture that you can make even better in post-production. So, so if you can kind of be thoughtful in advance 
and I know that's not always possible, right? Sometimes, and I'll, I'll show you, sometimes just things appear and you've got to deal with it. But if you have that habit, and if you think about it, you're more likely to improve the pictures that you take. All right, so let's continue on. All right, I mentioned that rule of thirds. So here's a loon. Um, I think this one I took at our Boomer Tech Adventures corporate retreat, Jill, <laughs> at, um, at, uh, at Ed, Ed Brzee's house. Um, we, we weren't able to take a corporate retreat this year, but we're hoping we'll be able to next fall. But there's, you know, that perfect red eye right there. And there's the grid. And um, on, your, on your iPhones and iPads, you can, I believe you can set it so that those grids are always there. Um, after a while, you won't need them to be there, but you can you can do that. Uh, but in post production, when you go to crop, though that grid will show up, and that will kind of give you an idea of where you can move things to as well. Um, you know, I've also played. You can see. Well, I'll talk about reflection, but reflection is also a kind of a cool thing as well. So there's a loon, the rule of thirds. All right. Oh, and I, and I'll, I'll be doing. I I think I do this like later. But if this um, if if this loon were facing the other way, right? It was flipped. I would try to line it up to this one here. All right. And um, so. And I uh, I was told that. Each of these intersections, and they, they actually, their effectiveness in terms of your layout of your picture, uh, there's an order. And it's this area is the best for getting attention, followed by this area. And then the third is this area, and the fourth is this area. And as it was explained to me, it's because we've been taught to read starting in this area, we go this way, then we go down, and then we go this way. So it makes a lot of sense as to why these different areas in this rule of thirds works in terms of the composition of your picture. All right. Um, I do wonder though, I wonder what happens with like in Chinese scrolls, they don't read this way, <laughs> they read this way and this way. But anyway, we're not in China, so we don't have to think about that. So just like this, the rule of thirds. All right, another thing, being aware of the environment is using what's called negative space. And what that means is that if you can frame a picture so that what you're most interested in is kind of has a, the backdrop is blank. There's nothing in the background. So that your focus goes right to this, this eagle and as I use this in post-production, that eagle's head and their eye is again, right in that rule, rule of thirds. So that makes this kind of a, you know, you, you obviously you notice the eagle. I mean, people notice eagles anyway, but, um, but this, is, this is, that's what makes this picture work if, it, if it's interesting to you at all. All right. And uh, the other piece is that um, the subject, in this case, the eagle, um, appears to be looking off out of the frame. And so that's a, that's a way of using lines as a way of, um, of making your picture 
uh, more compelling. So you've got this site here. Now, in reality, that eagle is probably looking right at me because he's, he's looking at me sideways. But, you know, in, in human terms, he looks like he's looking that way. And another line, as I'm mentioning it, is here's this line of this branch is also kind of leading us off wondering what is he looking at? Looking at dinner. Another way to kind of play with your, with your uh, production um, or the way you're composing is to see if you can uh, shoot so that, that your image is framed by, the, by what's naturally occurring. It looks like this eagle <laughs> is ducking down to keep his, to keep his eye on me. All right, but he's framed by there's a branch of the tree here, and these talons are pretty sharp looking. Um, and there's a branch right here. I and mean, this is right outside of my on my on the back porch, right over looking at Merry Meeting Bay. So if I if I were going to be picky, all right, what I could do is I could flip this whole picture. That's one of the things you can do under editing. And if I flipped it, that eye would be over here. All right. So it might be it might be more noticeable because you know your your eye will tend to wander to this area, but his head is over here. So you could play with that. But framing. And you can do that, you know, if you have, um, you know, if you have a landscape, and you know, you have two buildings, and if you kind of frame between the two buildings, or if there's trees, you can frame between the trees, or you know, um, cliffs, things like that. Um, look for different ways to frame. Um, usually, the frames are kind of left and right. In this instance. The frame is the top and the bottom. Okay. I mentioned lines of sight, leading lines. This one here um, combines lines with frame. All right. Can you see the frame right here and here? And they're lines. And they kind of lead you to this bird here. And there's actually another frame, which is the horizon line, which is right there going across. So there's your lines leading you to look here. And then there are frames. And then there's the horizon line, which makes a natural frame as well. And usually with horizon lines, especially if you're on water, you usually try to cut the picture in half with that horizon line. All right. So moving into, you know, the environment um, and looking at things from a different perspective or point of view. They, they, these are plants, obvious, well, not obvious, they're plants, but they're taken from the ground, all right? Um, so this, I'm not sure what those are, but this is a, a globe allium, comes out in the spring. Um, and you know, I've got some negative space in there and I've got some diffused sunlight, which is always kind of fun. Um, so to get these kinds of pictures, you don't have to put your face on the ground. What you can do is you can 
tap on the selfie camera, you know, that's the one that's like a mirror, right? You, you, you see yourself. Um, and then what you can do is you can lay your camera on the ground right underneath the, uh, the plant or the object that you're trying to take a picture of and then just take the picture that way. So you're literally taking it as if you were like an ant looking up. And um, so, these, so th those are really when, when, when I, I'm sure I didn't invent it, but you know, I figured it out for myself because I, you know, I was trying to get a picture, you know, underneath a plant and I was like lying on the ground. I'm going like, geez, you know, I'm, my eye is still too, too close to the plant. And then I said, how am I going to do that? And I figured out, oh, I can just do the selfie thing and put the camera on the ground and do that. Um, and if you don't want to have to like, you know, deal with um, pressing the button, just put it on the timer and then put it down and you'll get a very nice picture because with the timer, you'll get like no shaking at all. So go out and try that sometime. You know, lay it right next to a to a to a tree or something like that, and you'll be able to get that ground view. Here's a, well, here's here's an example of um, you know getting really in close, you know, to the mushroom. You know, we usually don't see the mushroom, um, you know, from this perspective. You know, unless we kind of pick the mushroom and turn it upside down and take a picture of its gills. But, you know, again, if we can just kind of get down close, uh, you can get these cool pictures. And, you know, most mushrooms are in the shade. So you're going to get some pretty good light as well. All right. And, uh, you know, for me to get up, I had to like roll over and grunt a lot, but I got up. It was all right. Um, you can accomplish this if, if you don't want to get down on all fours, you can use a selfie stick. So it's another, it's, it's a, <laughs> it's, it's a less self-centered use for a, for a selfie stick. It's just basically you put it on and you use the timer. Um, oh, well, actually you could do the remote uh, selfie sticks. You can press the button, but I like to use the timer and then just put it in place and take the picture. So being aware of reflections, uh, you know, anytime there's water or ice um, is a good opportunity. Um, you know, here's a, it, that reflection really makes that swan pretty graceful. Um, you know, the classic, this is kind of the classic main shot of um, a boat in very calm water. Um, this is not Maine, though. This is uh, in Ireland. And I came across this boat and I said, hey, this is, looks like a Maine boat. It's reflected in the water. And I had mentioned earlier, um, you know, how the sunlight, you know, just around an hour, this is sunset. So this is just before the sun sets there. Uh, what I've noticed, again, paying attention to the seasons, as the um, as spring arrives, the sun sets more and more in this direction, off to the right. In the fall, the sun moves to the left, and so that tells me that. If I ever want to get a picture of the sun setting behind this peninsula, I'll have to do that in the fall. And in the winter, it just it's way over here. So we know that this is uh, this is probably late spring that this picture was taken. Reflections, um, and um, you know, after uh, after it rains is a great time to catch reflections, especially if there are puddles and things like that. Um, and ice is, as I mentioned, ice is great. Um, you know, walking in the woods, you know, if you come across a vernal pool, 
um, or on the lake or something like that, and you can catch a reflection. That's always a good picture. So echo images, um, our eyes uh, look for patterns. And so here you have, um, this is the globe, um, allium. And you can see we focused on, on this one. And so this one in the background is a little out of focus, but it kind of makes kind of a nice picture there, front garden. And uh, here's two swans kind of doing a pas de deux, swimming together. There's some reflection as well. So you've got some reflection and then you've got this uh, pattern of the echo. Okay, so just really quickly, um, when you're when you've taken your pictures, uh, this is um, I, Jill mentioned the other day that when she um, went on a safari with 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 a friend, uh, every day right after they get back from the safari, the friend started this process of discarding. Um, his, discarding the less than, uh, they're not perfect, but less than acceptable pictures to her. And this is kind of the process that, um, that I go through when I'm, when I'm doing that. You know, you hit the edit um, in photos. And one of the first things I do is I crop, you know, anything that, you know, doesn't really fit or is extraneous. Um, and the thing about cropping, as you crop, um, your image will zoom in. So the more cropping you can do, the closer, quote unquote, you can get to your subject. Just be aware that the more you crop um, in terms of getting closer, the less clear or the more pixelated your image will get. That rule of, this is where I would pay attention to that rule of threes. Here I had mentioned already that um, if there's an eye or a focus area, it doesn't have to be eye, it could be a head, a hand, or you know, or a lighthouse. Um, in order to get that where I want it in terms of the rule of threes, I may flip it. So these two are the same pictures. This is before I edited it. And here's after. And you can see what I did is I flipped it and I cropped it because see here, it's right in the middle of the picture, all right? So it's more like a portrait, which is not what you want. And, but here I cropped it and I flipped it, but I also played with the light, the color, the definition, noise reduction and sharpen. So I'm not gonna go into all of these, but on your laptop, and I prefer to edit on my laptop because it's more real estate, I can, you know, it's a bigger picture, but also the editing um, options on the laptop are extensive. And, um, you know, with the light, which is like exposure, you can just use the slider and, you, and, and it actually shows you what it's gonna look like as you use that slider. Um, on each of these, you'll see if you're on your laptop, it says auto. And the first thing I do is I go through each of these and I hit auto on all of them. And what that tells me is that, you know, based on the engineers at Apple, they've determined that these auto settings will, will create the best uh, effect. But if I don't like it, if I click on it, then I can actually manually play with these sliders. All right. And, you know, if I had, you can do red eye, you know, things like that. This white balance, 
will will uh, you know make it um, less washed out as you kind of play with that. So see this white balance here, it's kind of washed out. When I auto that, it turns these colors more vivid. All right, and uh, these are these are you, you can look these up, but these are they're pretty self self descriptive. This makes it sharper. So if it's a little out of focus, you can actually improve the focus. Uh, noise reduction is not quite as obvious. And what that does is, so there's little pixels, all right? And what noise reduction does when you choose that is it smooths the transition between the different pixels. So if it's pixelated, if you, if you increase the noise reduction, it'll smooth out the, the pixels. The trade-off is always a trade-off though. When you smooth out the pixels, you have less definition. So something to think about. This sharpen has more to do with uh, the contrast between the different colors. So see, you can see this little yellow ring around the eye. And then there's the dark center. So it will make that contrast a lot more. So it'll pop out. So post-processing um, will improve pictures. They won't make a terrible picture great, but they'll make a pretty good picture really good. Um, let's see. Moving on. So here's another example of uh, post processing. So these are, this is a picture of um, a rosemary flower just inside our house. And this is the original picture. And these are different ways that I played with it. So I put a black, blue, and a uh, white background behind it. Um, and here, this is when I played with the, um, you know, with the color and the light and things like that. So you can take this picture, some people like this picture, but if you want a little more color, a little more vivid, uh, you can do that or any one of these as well. So those are just some things you can do with post-production. So, so those are all kind of still photography. Um, I'm quickly going to share just a couple videos uh, because your iPhone has video capability. So uh, what I like to say is, and someone else said it earlier already, the camera you have is the one you're gonna use, or you could put it the other way around, the camera you use is the one you have. Um, and you just, you never know what you're gonna come across um, as you're kind of walking or driving. And this is right on our road. And we were driving and we came across these guys. Who knew there was a whole crowd of these, whole crowd of them. And there you can see the edge of the car, car window there. Um, so sometimes when I catch um, a video like this, what I will do is I will take that video and I'll actually take a screenshot of one of the frames and then I'll have a photograph. Now that photograph is not going to be as good as the picture that I took with the camera, but it's kind of fun to catch catch some of that. Okay, I'm going to skip the panda. This this was in in China. Here's um, here's one. This is this is done with my long range camera, not my iPhone camera. But this is how close you can get. You can see his eyes blinking and he's yawning. There we go. And I'm, I'll close with this baby owl, which is right down the street. Like I live in a zoo. 
Um, so this, this owl um, baby, it's an owlet and his head disappears. On. And just really quickly, there's our courses. Um, as I mentioned, the three courses that we have will go way into depth and in the things that I talked about. And we have a half price sale.